I guess you have heard about GraalVM and its native images. In this short video, I want to show you how to use it with simple Groovy script. For you as a Groovy or Java developer, GraalVM is yet another OpenJDK distribution, so we can use SDK man to install it, and I will show you how to do it. So GraalVM is just another OpenJDK distribution that can be installed. With SDK install Java, we can use it. We can verify that we use GraalVM built on OpenJDK 1.8. The next thing we need to install is native image using GraalVM updater. When we do it, we can just verify that native image is installed in our system. Let's move to Groovy script example. And here I use Groovy 2.5.7, most recent stable Groovy 2.5 version. And my script is fairly simple. So what I do is I use GitHub API, the jobs API, and I just search for open positions for Groovy developers. We use JSON Slurper to parse the response from this API, and then we simply print line the response. Let's run the script inside the Groovy interpreter. I will use Unix time comment so you can see how much time did it take to execute the script. It was 1.7 second. Pretty slow, uh, you can see, but you have to be aware of that about 700 to 800 milliseconds, it was the latency. Let's optimize it by compiling this Groovy script to a Java bytecode and then we can run it as a regular Java program. Before we do that, we will create this Groovy compiler script. This is the compiler configuration file that will force compiler to add a compile static annotation, okay? Now we can just apply this uh, configuration script here and we can compile and we see that there are two Java class files in our current uh, directory. How to run it as a Java program? So what we need to do is we need to specify the class path. We add the current working directory, Groovy and Groovy JSON libraries and we just specify the class name, which is jobs. 1.4 second. It's like a 350 milliseconds faster than the Groovy interpreter, but it's still pretty slow. So let's see if native image can do better. We start native image generation with exporting the class path, and then we can use native image tool to generate the image. So we add no server. We don't want to build server to be boot up. Class path and the class name. Okay, let's see. Compilation failed. Uh, what happened? Discovered unresolved method during parsing extreme utils serialize method. It turns out there is some method that cannot be resolved uh, during this analysis. So it suggests to add allow incomplete class path. We will do it because we know that our script does not use uh, uh, this extreme util serialize method at all. So it's fine for us. Uh, but it also suggests that we could add this no fallback. A parameter because right now it created some executable with jobs files created but it's fall, fallbacks to uh, the JDK so it's not the native image at all so let's add these two parameters here and let's see what happens okay it failed again and this time unsupported method uh, class loader define was found Substrate VM does not support generating classes dynamic class loading and stuff like that and somewhere in Groovy jar, there is a branch that uses class loader define class method. Uh, and again, we know that it does not make any sense in our case. So using this report on supported elements at runtime parameter makes sense in our case. So let's add it here and let's see what happens next. It failed again and this error does not tell much about uh, what's the problem. But the thing is, with GraalVM, we need to explicitly say if we want to initialize classes at the build time or at the runtime. Uh, in this case, we need to add this initialize at build time. It means that when the image is created, GraalVM will initialize all classes, all static fields, all static constructors will be executed. And this is what we expect. Okay, let's see what happens now. 54 seconds later, compilation succeeded. We have two warnings. And the first warning explains what was the initial error. Uh, this extreme utils class cannot be initialized because there is a class hierarchy called string driver that cannot be found. We know that we don't use extreme utils at all, so we can move initialization of this class to the runtime. It means that if we use this class at runtime, it will fail. 
but our script does not use it. So we can use initialize at runtime parameter. We can add these two classes and let's compile the script. No warnings, no errors. 54 seconds later, we can see that the jobs, a standalone executable file is created. So let's see what happens if we try to run it. It failed. It failed because this jobs class cannot be instantiated reflectively because there are some like a missing information about constructors. Uh, Substrat VM supports Java reflections, but in some cases it requires adding some additional configuration. Let's create reflections JSON file and let's define that for this class. It has to be like the full class name. In the case of a groovy script, this is just a like here jobs and that's all. We just say that all constructors, all methods are allowed to be accessed uh, reflectively. Let's save this file and then we can add these, this reflection configuration files parameter with the file name. We can compile it. And 53 seconds later, we can try to run it again. And let's see if it works now. It failed. This time, the problem is that we use HTTPS protocol. It's available in native image, but it has to be enabled. I will show you how to add HTTP and HTTPS protocols with this enable URL protocols uh, parameter added to the command line. We can compile native image again and see what happens next. So let's see what happens now. 84 seconds later, we can try to run program again. Uh, another error. This time we need to add a path to Lipsonic library uh, because otherwise HTTPS protocol won't work for us. So we need to add this minus the Java library path. We run it, it fails again. This time class and found exception, this runtime DGM55 class name uh, cannot be found. So this is the default Groovy method class. This is how Groovy extends standard uh, JDK. Uh, this class is accessed reflectively, so we need to configure it in our reflections JSON file. Let's do it. Let's recompile the image. And 79 seconds later, we can try to run it again. Finally, it worked. Uh, I will add this time Unix comment again, so you can see how much time did it take. 672 milliseconds versus 1.7 versus 1.4. This is a huge improvement. We didn't have to change our groovy code at all. We simply compiled it to native standalone binary and it runs blazing fast compared to the previous attempts. This 672 milliseconds, it's, this is mostly a latency and our program boots up in a matter of five milliseconds or something like that. But I guess finding all these reflection use cases manually is not something that makes you happy. Luckily, there is a good solution to this problem. If we run our Groovy script as a Java program, we can add this native image agent. This is an agent that is, tracks all possible reflection use cases for us. We will set up config output dear to conf, we will run our program, and here we have these JSON classes generated for us. This reflect config file is much bigger than the one that we created and because native image agent found every possible reflection use case. That's why this file contains 627 lines of code, which is approximately something around 100 reflection candidates. When we have these configuration classes generated for us, we can replace this reflection configuration files with configuration file directories, where we can just set up this conf directory and we can compile our native image again, this time using this um, generated reflect config file. And that's all what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have learned something interesting from it. Have a nice day and see you in the next video. Akcja. And then... No i chuj i jeszcze raz. Nie zamknąłem okna, kurwa, i to jest duży błąd. Uwaga, akcja.
then execute this as Java code. Kurva.